talk about non gin sweeteners. This is deception to sweet taste. And because I love musicals, I thought it would be fun to do a sing, a sing along, sing about non gin sweet taste. And, but don't worry, I won't be singing, but we have Ms. Nicole Greenbaum here, Justice Bell. <laughs> There are no dead parties. <laughs> Had I know. So let's begin with how do we taste sweet. So this image is yours truly. So if you look at the surface of my tongue, you can see lots of little bumps along the tip and along the edge of my tongue. They're called propellies. And propellies is where we detect sweet. If we can, we can snip off a propelli and study it further. A propellite is the size of a grain sand. It contains a lot of blood vessels. If we slice the propellite, we can see two specific structures. Um, they're called taste buds, and taste buds are a cluster of taste cells that detect five different um, taste qualities that you're very familiar with. Sweet, salty, savory, sour, uh, sorry, sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and vanilla. And on the right shows an, a, a, an actual sweet sensing taste cell in green. So how does this taste cell detect sugar? Well, that's done through a sweet receptor. It's a combination of two proteins, T1R2 plus T1R3. And together they form a, a sort of a lock. And sugar binds to the sweet receptor like a key, but it's a lock. If it binds, we taste sweet. So now let's talk about sugar. I know everyone's thinking they're singing, right? She promised singing. <laughs> Here we go. Just toothpaste, mouthwash, and cold syrup. Now, 
Now, when, when something is labeled as light and milk sugar, they actually often do have a non-glucosal sugar sweetener, but a small amount. That's because non glucosal sweeteners are they're so sweet. And why they're so sweet has to do with the chemical structure. For example, sucralose <coughs> looks chemically similar to sucrose, but it has certain it has changes as shown in the red. And because of that changes, it makes it bind to the sweet receptor much tighter. It's a better fitting key, so that's why it's sweeter. Aspartame doesn't look anything like sucrose, but it has multiple binding sites, so that it's almost like having multiple keys binding to that one receptor. Oh, there's a song coming up. <laughs> Okay, it looks daunting, but it's gonna be good. We're gonna take it in two parts. Okay, the first one. There's something sweet and almost real, but there's this bitter aftertaste I can't quite feel. And how it lingers with every sip. I wonder why I'm still in this relationship. <laughs> Next one. She drinks her tab. There's a reason why, and it has to do with which expression her gene decides. It's hereditary, can't be ignored. There's more to taste receptors than she knew before. <laughs> so unlike sucrose, non-nutritive sweeteners, this is better truth, they also bind to a bitter receptor. So bitter receptors vary genetically from one person to the next. For example, Bell might not be able to taste certain bitters in, in some vegetables, like Brussels sprouts, because of the bitter receptors on her tongue. But Gaston, or he is, can <laughs> taste bitterness in those same vegetables because of the, his bitter receptors are genetically different than Bell's. So what does it mean for non nutritious sweeteners? Well, it might mean Belle might like certain types of sweeteners and she loves her tab. Whereas Gaston might like prefer a different type of non nutritious sweetener and guy Coke, but we all know he would rather have a beer. <laughs> of course. So, another way to fake sweet that's non nutritious sweeteners is something called Marat. You might have heard of this. This is the last song. You have a song, this is your last chance. <laughs> Join me. Look, there's this berry that is so peculiar. I wonder if it's even real. With a taste that isn't sweet, but makes sour fun to eat. What a puzzle to us is miraculous. So, miraculous is from the American food, American berry. You might have tried miracle berry. Science Festival. <laughs> it's from West Africa, and, and for 100 years, people in West Africa have used American food in, 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 in their diet, in that they would chew miracle berry first before eating food that was sour, so to make the sour food taste sweet. They were onto something. The science behind that is that if you chew the miracle berry itself, it's not sweet because it doesn't bind your sweet receptor. Rather, after you eat the miracle berry, you ate something sour like a lemon. It is that acid in that lemon which changed the shape of the miraculous. So now it binds you the sweet receptor. So even though the lemon is still sour, what you taste is actually the miraculous. So you can now ingest the lemon, thinking, oh my god, it's so sweet. That's fake, fake, it's fake sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that's the story of non nutritious sweeteners, at least on our time. The sweet receptor is found in many different parts of the body. Uh, for example, in the stomach and intestine. And these parts regulate hormonal and meta metabolic uh, regulation. And we're currently looking at that and trying to understand how that perhaps relates to obesity and, and diabetes and how it responds to non sweeteners. So we hope that next year, um, we're gonna come back to learn about that. So last, uh, just one, 